Um, next we have uh, Janine, and Janine is going to be um, sharing with us the tools and resources that are available through FOCUS accreditation. Okay, so I was asked to speak to FOCUS's perspective on quality, and I didn't actually refer to our materials. I went by what happens on the ground and really what we say and what's happening. So our, our perspective on quality is that the people that should def, um, define quality and as well as really measure quality are you, the stakeholders, okay? So you're the people. And when I say stakeholders, I mean the executive directors in this room, the ministry, people receiving services, okay? You're the people that should be defining what is a quality service and measuring it, okay? And that's what we do. We believe that each organization is unique and certainly that's what we find in our field work, okay? So when we're out there, our standards need to be broad enough so that they fit with each organization so that they're not too prescriptive. Okay. And we also believe there's a balance required between standards that are process-based um, process as well as outcomes-based. Because at the end of the day, it takes a process to get to an outcome. So we look at what are the best practices. Around pers um, perspective as well, ultimately, high-quality services are going to be the service, the organizations that continue to learn and improve. Okay? And that's what we're finding. Okay? and that do the work. So when I talk about doing the work, what I mean there is work that matters. Okay? It mustn't be steeped in paperwork. Okay? So the standards shouldn't be requiring too much paperwork. It shouldn't require too much information, qualitative information mining. Okay? We're in the service of providing support to people. Okay, so yes, there's going to be some numbers work, and yes, there's paperwork. We need policies and procedures to guide people in the work that they do. Okay, but it needs to be, we need to make sure that it's the important paper and important numbers you're looking at. Okay, and what I wanted to say, and what I really want to focus the next piece of this presentation on, is that we too are a learning organization, and I want to tell you about how we're doing our work. Okay. So we're doing the work. Um, Don talked about the CARF standards, and what's really exciting with the FOCUS standards is we are right now um, in a place where we're developing our 2014 standards. And our process looks quite different, okay? We use a consensus um, standards approach. What does that look like? That means that the people that, uh, um, that the standards impact are the people that are involved in developing them. We have, over this past summer, I'm proud to say we've done nine focus groups in the province of Ontario with people with developmental disabilities. They were included and all of them were moderated using the same questions. So that information came to us. The other piece of um, the, other piece of the um, uh, action research we did over the last couple of months was e-surveys, so electronic surveys with our peer validators who are also point people in organizations that are accredited through FOCUS, okay? So what they did is they critiqued our, our current standards, okay? The other work that we did, I'm going to come back to the e-survey 6, but the other work that we did while this is going on is we've done rigorous research, okay, that includes interna international best practices, okay, research and writings in the areas of quality management as well as the human services sector, okay. Um, we have also, I'm proud to say, some of the work that we do is we provide organizations with what are called crosswalk documents. So we've done a lot of the homework for you. We see that as part of our service. So in these documents, and I'll speak to it during the panel, we have looked at the quality assurance measures, and we've compared them to the FOCUS standards, and we identify for organizations that are registered with FOCUS where are the commonalities and where are the differences, okay? We also did a crosswalk document for MCSS's risk management tool, okay? And in developing our standards, we also referenced the core competencies and um, things like the accessibility legislation. So we know what your current environment is and what you're working in, and th those are the documents, that's the research we do when we're developing the standards. It needs to make sense, and they don't, we don't want them conflicting, right? Okay, so for us, it's a balanced approach. Um, I, I want to go back to survey, did that take me back? Excellent. Um, E-survey 6. E-survey 6, so the electronic survey that just went out this past Monday um, contained our draft standards for 2014. 
So they involved the um, focus group findings, the electronic surveys, and the lit review. They have gone out to a very broad, broad distribution list. And I invite everybody here today at break, if you didn't receive that email, you would have if you're registered with us. If you aren't, that's cool. You are part of our stakeholder group, as well as our competitors. I invite you to please bring your card, give it to me, and I'll make sure that you get input into our standards. I'd love to know your opinion. We take all that in when we're revising them and putting out our final copy. We will be launching them in January. Okay. Um, we're doing our work as far as what do our teams look like that go out and do the validations. They're balanced. Um, best practice research has shown that peer surveying is a very good method for conducting accreditation surveys. Um, but they also show that the lack of consistency, okay, when there's accrediting bodies out doing surveys becomes an issue. That's one of the biggest challenges. So FOCUS uses a hybrid model. So we've taken on that challenge. And what our model looks like is we've hired a staff person, who, it, um, the manager of accreditation, who leads all validations. This promotes the consistency of application of those standards and a consistent um, survey experience, validation experience for all the organizations. All right. Um, we don't take a consultative approach. We view that as a conflict of interest, and I'm happy to speak to that during the question and answer period. Um, we have a very robust process, and I'm going to tell you about that right now because we really have packed in a lot of services and resources at all stages. There's three phases. Phase one, this is where you get the tools. All organizations, even those that aren't um, registered with us, you can have copies of our standards. We make them available. Um, we provide a gap analysis to help with that self-assessment and we also provide an evidence guide that will tell you what we're looking for when we do finally come on site. We provide a one-day customized orientation session to all organizations that register. That means that we come and we do a launch with you and we find out ahead of time what is your intended objective at the end of the day, what do you want your staff to walk away with better understanding and we customize our training to do that. We do monthly um, community of practice, which is a webinar. We don't lead it, we don't consult, we don't tell you how to do your work. We invite guest speakers. Um, and I put in for this month, for example, we have an IT um, chief tech officer who's going to be on for an hour answering questions and also telling um, the people that participate about best practices and policies and procedures, things coming down the pike because that's such a changing, changing, evolving area. We provide telephone and email same day response. And we also do a proactive evaluability assessment three months out. So if you think you're ready for us to show up, we tell you to give us um, three months notice, send out your documentation ahead of time, okay? What Focus wanted to do was get the paperwork done at the front end. We don't want to show up for, and have you pay for us to come and spend time in your boardroom with our heads down looking at your paperwork. It's a waste of time and money. I need some water. That's so much better. Sorry, my, vo my voice, I was losing it. Okay, so um, the viability assessment. So the key there, I just want to stress, we don't want our heads down in your paperwork while we're there. The point is how we're going to find out, really, if you're meeting the standards, is by talking to people, right, and actually meeting with them and observing your services. So that's what we do. So we come for a two-and-a-half-day um, period. Um, the size of the team depends on the size of the organization. Again, it's not a paper exercise. We've looked at your paperwork to see if the policies and procedures and so forth are in place. How we spend our time is with the individuals and interviewing everything from board members, um, family members, of course, individuals supported, and uh, community partners. We typically do phone outs to about 10 community partners and family members per validation. Um, it should be transparent, there shouldn't be surprises, and it's a collaborative, again, not a consultative approach. Okay, what I did, I wanted um, for this presentation to give you a bit of a snapshot for a larger organization. This came right out of one of our reports. 
So this is the methodology that was used. These are the people that we spoke to and the number of places that we went and visited. We, our team in total went out to 15 homes. We went to the different day services offered. We, had, we shared three meals. We spent at least two to three hours at each place. If you look at a smaller organization, same thing, very thorough. The numbers aren't quite as high, but there's just as many. It's a very broad representation. We get really good input. We feel confident about our findings, and so do the organization. Okay, phase three is the quality improvement phase. So what happens, we go away, write our report. This is how we have a three-person committee that's external to focus that looks at our report and determines whether the organization will earn accreditation. It's a both quantitative and qualitative process. We have now gone to a four-year term. Again, that was based on stakeholder input. It was a three-year term. Okay, we've extended it to four. What I want to stress, I've got five minutes left, I want to talk about the value added benefits because it really ties in with what the Deputy Minister was speaking to. If you earn accreditation through FOCUS, this is where I do my um, Price is Right girl thing here, um, you get a pen. I did this at the office and I took the pen apart, you know, and the ink thing flew out, so they made me practice this for today's uh, thing. So you get this pen, a special focus pen, that has a USB stick on the end of it, okay? And what we do is we're providing you another tool, a media kit, that includes with it a template of a press release, okay? Um, we also have the focus accredited organizational seal that can go on your website as well as other PR materials, okay? Um, we also do um, customized letters. You send us a distribution list and we send out letters. We send letters to the minister every time an organization is accredited. And we've had or large organizations, we've sent out over 100 letters on your behalf. Okay? Um, we also present certificates in person. And I included this picture of me up there because it's so Canadian and I'm, we're proud to be Canadian. Um, this was the first organization of women's shelters and support services in Pembroke, Ontario. It was a Sunday. I drove out there and I was so proud of them. They'd rented the big rink there. They're big hockey lovers. And it was so Canadian that I actually... Told, I actually bumped into Walter Gretzky physically, and <laughs> so it was really it was a really neat experience, and they were all so pleased. Um, but so we go out of our way to do that um, client focused service. Okay, um, there's also insurance um, savings we have um, with a number of insurance companies, um, uh, so that focus accredited agencies get uh, a, a decrease there. Our learning event, we have a learning event coming up. We do them biannually, spring and fall. Our fall one is on November the 13th, and it is called Show and Tell. And why it's called that is because we're really proud that we've just launched our first, which will become an annual innovation awards. We had nine organizations that are accredited through FOCUS um, submit entries. There was a total of 14 entries, and um, there will be an awards um, the first part of that day the, uh, the nine organizations will each have the floor for 10 minutes to do a show and tell and share their innovation. There will be, an, there will be a winner and there will be um, obviously some runners up. It'll be a celebration lunch. Then the afternoon is actually a learning piece um, that we are facilitating on best practices around accountability. And in this today's tech world, how are some um, good ways to be able to show and tell your work? Okay, and I also wanted to stress then that um, we, um, we get really good feedback from our peer validators and we've also seen where um, becoming a peer validator is part of the succession planning in organizations. They're developing their leaders through their relationship with focus. Um, I end on this note, as far as numbers, um, as I said, we don't really measure quality. We see, yes, there's a place for numbers. Um, for us, it's, sm it's smaller numbers. We have accredited 23 organizations so far in um, Ontario. We've got seven um, on, what we call on-sites this coming fall. These are the types of services that FOCUS works with and accredits. Um, so rather than telling you our, that we measure our quality, this is why I put the, the golden arches there, it's really not about numbers served here and the number we've accredited. The question that we ask you was, how was your experience and how did you benefit? from focus accreditation. How was your meal? Okay, so what you'll find in the fol folders that we handed out to you is the answer to that question. Your peers, other executive directors have answered that for you. 
Okay, so thank you for your time this afternoon.